Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to build an image map. Now some of you might be wondering what is an image map, um, how does it work, things like that. So I'm going to give you a quick little tutorial here. Um, here's the general premise of an image map. You see here I have open in my browser um, a site that I've created, um, it's a demo. But we have a picture of Mount Rushmore here and in this picture we have three what we call hot spots. Now these are locations on the picture that when you click on them will take you to either another part of your site or to an external site. Um, so for instance right here you can see that when I hover over George Washington's face I get the little hand that when I click on it it'll navigate me to temple.edu I'm not gonna let it go though. Um, I also have Jefferson here uh, when I click on his face it'll take me over to Google and there it is and for the last one I skipped over Teddy here uh, but Lincoln as well, if I click on Lincoln's face, it'll take me out to MSN. Now, typically when you're creating an image map, you want to make sure that the links are relevant to the picture. So in this case, with Washington going to Temple and Jefferson going to Google and Lincoln going to MSN, those links really aren't relevant or they don't really pertain to the picture. However, um, this is just a demo, so we're going to be using very similar uh, websites for our demo. So let's figure out how to do this. The first thing we're going to need is an image, an actual image that we're going to use. Now, images that have multiple people, uh, multiple segments, uh, larger images that show uh, maybe a football player and you can kind of outline his jersey, his cleats, and maybe the football, things like that. Those are really pictures you're going to want to look for. You also want them to be a pretty decent size. Um, if they're too small, it's going to be really hard to find um, you know, where to put these these hot spots or even for your audience to locate them when they're looking at the picture. So let's just go out and we're going to get our picture. The good thing is that I already pulled up a picture here of Mount Rushmore. It's a slightly larger picture than the one I used in that demo. Um, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to save image as. And I'm going to save this right into my flash drive into my CIS folder. Now this I'm using a CIS 1055 demo folder. Um, it could be ICIS 835 demo folder. It could be your lab folder. Whatever you called it. Whatever uh, folder houses the entire site. Because remember, if it's not in that folder, it's not being published. So I'm going to click into there and save it there. Perfect. So now we can jump over to Dreamweaver and see how this is really going to work out. So here we are in Dreamweaver. I have my template page open. Um, you'll see that my template page is all uh, laid out exactly the way I wanted it to be. Um, I have my heading here uh, and it says CIS demo site. So this is just a demo site that I'm going to be using. We have my navigation. Uh, I have home page, page one, page two, page three, page four. I know it's really creative. Bear with me. Um, I also have my email link down here and my external link here. So my template page is good to go. What I'm going to do is actually save this page um, as page one. So I'm going to go up here to file and I'm going to click on save as. And I'm going to call this page one. And I'll save it. Now again, your pages shouldn't be called page one. They should be called whatever it is. If it's a bio page, if it's uh, an about me page, a family page, a hobbies page, whatever it is, those are going to be the names of pages. The other good thing to remember is that you don't need to have a specific page that's only going to house your image map. For this demo, I'm using a specific page that's going to house the image map. Um, but typically, you actually want to embed the image map within the other pages. So if you're talking about your family and you have a family photo and you wanted to link everyone in the photo to their Facebook page, let's say, um, that would be a great example. And then you can embed that right onto the family page. Um, having just one image, especially an image map on a page, um, it's not, I'm not going to say it's wrong, but it kind of takes away from the feel of the site. But again, for this example, I'm going to do it. Um, I'm also going to start off by right clicking and aligning to the center. Okay. And now I want to insert my image. So you can see that my Mount Rushmore picture is right here. Um, I have one of two ways. I can click and drag that in. Or, like I tell most of my students sometimes, it's just easier to kind of build it into your memory. It's just to go to image and go to image again. And I'm going to click on that Mount Rushmore picture and click open. And there it is. Really large Mount Rushmore picture. Um, I can scale it down if I'd like. That doesn't really change the picture much. Um, or I can come down here and adjust the size. Let's see, it's at 600 right now. Let me see how... Uh, 
Yeah, there we go. I'm going to change this actually down to maybe, uh, let's say, 550. Maybe that looks a little bit better. I don't know. But here we go. So we have the picture there. Um, I'm going to click on the picture and make sure that I have it selected. <clears throat> there are two ways that I can ensure that this picture is selected. If I come down here to my properties inspector, you'll see that it has all my image formatting tools. I'm sorry, there it is. Um, you see it has my image formatting tools here. Um, it tells me the source. It tells me I can link it to somewhere. Uh, it gives me these gears where I can adjust and edit the settings. I can crop it if I really want it to uh, change the size of it using the constraint, or I can take off the constraint and modify it whichever way I want. But the, uh, the uh, place that we're going to be focusing on is actually down here. These three little shapes, these are the shapes that we call the hotspot tools. This is what's going to allow us to create a link over a specific item in the picture um, and link it to another site or you know another location within your site. So I'm going to click for right now, I'm going to click on this uh, rectangle tool. Uh, once I click on it, you'll see I get a little set of crosshairs. I'm going to click and drag out just around Washington's head, maybe leaving a little bit of his hair out, and release. Now, I'm using a Mac, so it didn't give me the warning, but usually if you're using a Windows machine, um, it'll usually give you an, a little warning, a little dialog box that says, hey, make sure you add some alternate text for those people who have a visual impairment. It's always really important to include that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first come down here to alternate text, and I'm going to say uh, click here to visit temple you. Okay, there we go. Now, um, I can also put the link in here. I'm going to take off this pound sign, and I'm going to add the link that I want to use. Now, when you're typing in the link, you have to make sure that you include uh, the entire URL, so that includes the HTTP colon slash slash www.temple.edu. Perfect. Um, you can also see here if I'm using internal links, I can click the point to file method and drag it out over to one of my pages. Or I could browse for them. Um, let's say I didn't like the way that looked. Maybe it's a little off. Uh, maybe I want to narrow it a little bit. If I come down here and click on this little black arrow here, I can then toggle and change this shape um, to fit my needs. I can even adjust it like this. Great. So perfect. There it is. Um, George Washington's head is now a link to temple.edu. Let's try using one of the other tools now. Uh, we're going to click down here using the second tool in that lineup called the Circle Hotspot tool. This one's a little bit more tricky, so play around with this one. Still not as tricky as the last one, which is the polygon, but tricky nonetheless. So I'm going to click and I'm going to draw out, and you'll see that I'm probably not in the range that I want. I'm a little bit off. So I'm going to run down here and click on the black arrow and readjust it just there. Make sure, oh, let's see. Hmm. Okay, make sure that the hotspots aren't touching each other. Um, that's always really important. It'll cause a, a, the image to break, or, or not, sorry, not the image, the link to, to be faulty or to break, um, and it won't go exactly where you want it to or where you think it's going to go to. So again, I'm going to add in my alternate text down here at the bottom, and I'm going to say uh, click to visit, let's say, Google. Okay. And in my link, again, I could either go out to the site, copy the URL, and paste it in. In this case, I'm just going to type it in because I know it right off the top of my head. It's http colon slash slash www.google.com. There you go. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now, for the monster of the set, right? And it's really not that hard to use once you figure out how to use it, but that's the polygon tool. The polygon hotspot the one trick or the one little hint I'm going to give you um, whenever you're using it is to pick a direction that you're going to go and continue going in the same direction. So for my examples, I always go clockwise. It makes more sense for me. Um, but maybe you'll go clock counterclockwise. Um, but whatever direction you start moving, continue moving in that direction. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to click on the hotspot tool. Unlike the other ones, I don't draw a shape initially. I actually had to so, uh, click a series of points on the image. So I'm going to click here, and you'll see it just gives me one little point. 
I'm going to click, let's say, to the top of his hair. I can come across. Now you see it starts to look a little weird, but this is why I'm telling you to continue going in the same direction. I'm going to come down here. Maybe I want to draw in. Um, and then I can come down here, down his cheek. Maybe just outlining this ridge, right, down to his beard. Cutting up into his face. And again, I'm clicking a lot more than what I need to, but that's just for this example. And there you go. So I've kind of created a custom shape um, for Abraham Lincoln's head there. But again, notice how I continued going in a clockwise motion. Um, I didn't try to go in the opposite direction because I really would have thrown off this entire polygon. If you do end up clicking across the picture or clicking across the area of the picture where, that you want to make the hotspot, you'll find that you'll probably have to delete the entire polygon tool and start again. So uh, again, let's add our alternate text. Uh, let's say click here to visit, uh, let's say MSN, because that's the uh, site I used before on my other example. And then again, I'm going to take out this pound sign, and I'm going to type in HTTP colon slash slash www.msn.com. So there you go. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, once I click off, you'll see that those little hot spots remain um, right there where you can see them. Don't worry, once you publish it, you won't be able to see those hotspot tools. The picture will look just normal. Now, the only thing I'm, uh, I'm going to do now is I have the image in there. I have the hotspots. That's great. My links are created. I have my alternate text. The last thing I want to do is make sure that my audience knows that this is uh, a picture or an image with a hotspot uh, or with multiple hotspots. So I'm going to click uh, Enter just to get a little space there. I'm going to click out of this little message here. And then I'm going to say click on the faces of Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln to view more information. Okay. And there you go. Now, typically, again, I would link or these hotspots would link to you know information pertaining to the image itself. Um, so in that little message would work. Um, in this case, it probably doesn't. Um, but at least I gave my audience um, a general instructions on where to go to kind of help build everything here. So that's how you create an image map. Um, again, this is an image map. Remember, an image map is one image that has multiple hotspots that link to either outside or other portions of the uh, site or outside external site, uh, sites. So hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.